just give up the luxury of having to be comfortable all the time? What could you pull off? What could you achieve? That is the lesson that gymnastics taught me. Oh my god, this is, this is one of those points where other people quit. Isn't this fascinating? What is that one thing that I can't do yet, that if I could do it, it could open up a whole new world of possibilities to me? And when I asked myself that question about four years ago, the answer to that question was, go for a run. And the run I wanted to go for was a 275 mile run from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. In fact, here's a picture of me at my day job, <laughs> completely abusing the trust that parents place in me. <laughs> and four of the kids went running off the trampoline all excited, and one of them, a blonde haired, blue eyed girl, looked right at me and she said, You sound like Mary Poppins. <laughs> I sat that kid down, I put her straight, I said, sweetheart, I sound like James Bond. <laughs> you've been coached by him, you've been taught by him, maybe he's your boss, maybe you're him, but male or female, there's no such word as can't. You know, you've all heard this expression. Well, that's the guy I was. Until one day, this little six-year-old kid comes up to me, tugs on my shirt and says, Mr. Gibson, Mr. Gibson, I went home last night and I looked it up in the dictionary and you're wrong, there is such a word as can't. <laughs> but I had to admit that he was right, there is such a word as can't. So from that point on, I realized I was going to have to get a little more creative in the way I used the word can't. So from that point on, whenever a kid came up to me and said, I can't do a back handspring on beam, I can't do a press to handstand, I can't do a split all the way down. I would tell them to complete the sentence. That meant from that point on, a kid had to come up to me and say, I can't yet. Because when I made them add that one small word to the end of the sentence, I completely changed the meaning of the sentence. See, I have problems with an I can attitude too. You see, because an I can attitude attaches you to your goal, it attaches you to what you want to achieve, which is all very well, but what it doesn't attach you to is the process to achieve the thing that you want. Because in life, you don't get what you want, you get what you work for. The finish line picture was very, very, very important to me. So I said to Donna, drive ahead. Uh, all the kids get out of the car, my sister got out of the car, and we all ran the last half mile together. And I said to Donna, get to that finish line, set up that camera on a tripod, and the very second that I cross the finish line, snap a picture. Because I want to know exactly what my face looks like <clears throat> after I've run 100 miles. This is a never to be repeated moment. <laughs> I might run 100 miles again, but I'll never do it for the first time. So make sure you don't miss that picture. And this is the picture that she took of my face after 100 miles of running. <laughs> so the question is, anybody in this room have a sibling like my sister? <laughs> you run 100 miles and it's all about Andrea. <laughs> but the race doesn't start until you want to stop. Really, that's what you pay your $150 entry for. You for. You pay 150 bucks so that you can race all day long to about mile 60, mile 65, and you absolutely positively know you can't go another mile because your feet are covered in blisters, because you cannot keep your eyes open because you're so sleep deprived, because you're throwing up because you can't keep food down. At that point, the race starts. That is the start line.